You know, I mean, as far as patients go, I'm in fairly good health, but there's still that you always have to be screened on down the road. And I guess I have questions about how often you should be screened and what are the risks of the screening process itself? You know, is it, if, if it were cheap and non-risk, you know, I would want to be screened all the time just to be safe. But, you know, what, where is that balance between too much and not enough? And, and what are the risks of the screens themselves? Yeah, even if it would be very cheap, yeah, I, I don't think that you would like to be screened, you know, no, very often it's not make, much fun. because you would actually like like the Christmas tree, um, you know, so now later because you know the radiation is pretty high, especially using you know the CT scan. Uh, there are no really guidelines, and it uh, really depends what kind of. Uh, tumor or you know the uh, if you have a for example solitary tumor if you have extra adrenal tumor what is the size of the tumor uh, is uh, as well as if you have a metastatic tumor and if the tumor is related to certain type of mutation for example for sdhp or sdhd because those tumors are malignant and not only that they are malignant but they are also multifocal <laughs> Uh, I think uh, here is the individualized uh, approach. I don't think that we have a very good guidelines or um, approaches, you know, what to do. And I always discuss with every patient, you know, the plan, what's uh, supposed to, uh, uh, to happen. I would suggest that in patients, uh, adult patients, um, they were, for example, operated and uh, we know that they had, you know, larger tumor. We usually screen them approximately three to six months after the operation. And uh, surgeons usually, they prefer the CT scan after the operation. Of course, you know, we do the catecholamines and metanephrines, especially the metanephrines, but because we are a research institution, we also do the catecholamines, although I don't think that is the most important unless the patient is presenting you know, with some symptoms related to catecholamine access. But later on, we can alternate, and we alternate usually with the M MRI as well as a CT scan. If we have a somebody, for example, with SDHP and patient has a metastatic disease, we always opt you know, to do fluorodeoxyglucose because the fluorodeoxyglucose is superior to CT scan as well as uh, to MRI. In children, there are no good guidelines, but we are trying, you know, sometimes, especially when we have a <clears throat> suspicion for the presence of the pheochromocytoma paraganglioma, we definitely suggest to do the CT scan, unless, for example, the tumor is located around the uh, heart, because, you know, the cardiac uh, MRI is uh, uh, much better. Uh, but then, after the operation, we usually suggest to uh, perform the MRI. And of course, you know, if the tumor was, for example, in the abdomen, and we have a negative biochemistry, <coughs> we also sometimes, not often, but sometimes we can opt also to use the, uh, the ultrasound because we have to decrease the amount of uh, uh, amount of uh, radiation. So there are uh, the algorithm and the approaches are a little bit more complicated because we have a fluorodopa, fluorodopa, we have FDG, we have a CT and MRI and ultrasound and uh, I can tell you not absolutely the best guidelines although what I presented yesterday at least you know we have some approaches, we have some preliminary guidelines or suggestion what we should do at least you know when we are looking for the first time for the primary tumor or for, you know, uh, during the first visit, either primary tumor or metastatic tumor. But uh, the message is we are trying to decrease the amount of radiation for patients, especially for those after operation who are doing well and who, the, <clears throat> uh, who have, uh, for example, negative metanephrines or catecholamines.